episode of Marshall Knows Stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around, and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. One of our last projects was the rebar knife, and like I've been telling you, it gave me some cool ideas. Uh, there's not really enough steel at the bottom to turn it into a good finger hole unless you fold it over and hammer it a couple times, which I'm not really into. It's uh, too much effort for what I'm looking for. But I did get the idea, because I have a whole bunch of railroad spikes to take one of these, hammer all that steel into a nice ring hole, and then it uh, comes to a nice flat little point at the bottom. I'm going to be making a karambit out of a railroad spike. Let's get on it. Okay, now like I always say, you get a, sp a specific project in mind and then you start working towards your goal. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to go about doing this. <clears throat> Once I hammer out the ring out of the head, that's going to be thin and fragile. Once I hammer out the blade, then that's also going to be thin and fragile. I don't want to heat either one of those parts very much because I want to put a, a twist into the handle. So I think what I'm going to do first is put the twist into the handle, then hammer out the ring for my finger, and then hammer out the blade because it'll be going from the uh, least vulnerable or to the least vulnerable to the most vulnerable and then that way I'm not at risk of messing up my ring or the blade as I'm heating the handle to twist it. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to polish this a little bit, get some of the rust off and I'm going to heat up the center part, twist the handle and then I'm going to start working on the ring. Let's get to it. What I'm doing now is I'm having my lovely assistant Dutch go ahead and hold this uh, spike for me because I'm going to put dings all the way down to give a little bit of accent to the handle when I twist it. You see as I hammer it, 90, go ahead and turn it. Every time I hit it, I'm uh, going right down the middle and it's putting a nice little mark right down the middle and then whenever I give the handle a twist, it's going to give it a little bit more accent. Turn it. Oops. Good thing I was wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Turn it. That should be enough to make it pretty. We'll put it back into the fire and get it ready to heat it to twist it. It worked. I put them down to pick up the dough. Oh, they're in your hand. Uh, uh, cheese. Now I'm putting it in the vise and twisting it to get my handle in the twist. I don't really need to worry about the head because I'm going to be hammering it out. Otherwise, I'd do something flat to twist it. Time to start flattening out the head. get out of that one. Something that I'm noticing as I'm flattening this out is in trying to hammer out the head, it's folding it back. And I was actually planning on it folding in this way for the finger ring, but I'm hammering it back so it's kind of curving down that way naturally anyway. So I'm just going to work with that natural curve. Going to keep curving it down, keep hammering on the nose, and then as it curves down that way, I'll just have the knife curve, that karambit curve over this way instead 
because it's just lending itself to the shape of the steel that way. Less work, and that's what it wants to do, so I'm just gonna allow it to do that. As I'm going through building this knife, I need to have specific design ideas in my head and my specific goal for what I'm shooting for. <clears throat> One of those includes the thickness of the ring. Now I think that by the time I get the thickness or the, uh, the outside diameter where I want it, the thickness is also going to be where I want it. So I'm just going to keep hammering it. I'm almost there. I'm just going to keep hammering it until my finger will fit through the middle of it. It'll be a comfortable finger size and I'm almost there already as you can see. Another design idea that I'm going to have to be aware of is how thick I want my blade and how long I want my blade. But I thought about that before I even started this particular build because uh, I was messing around on another railroad spike and I started to make a hawk bill blade on it like it was. And uh, I left that in the forge too long and it cooked the blade and made it to where it wasn't a viable blade. So I just kind of scrapped that one. But in doing that, um, I found out how much of the spike I needed to make that, so, that sort of hawkbill blade that's going to lend itself to the karambit. And I'm um, right on point for both of those specific goals. So I'm almost done hammering out the ring pommel on this thing. That's about where I want it. But you can see it's starting to curve back and forth a little bit. No big deal though, because uh, I can always get that in the vise like I always do to get stuff straight, stick it in the vise and uh, straighten it out move it back and forth not a big deal uh, once I get this done I'm just gonna leave it closed because I don't really want to mess with uh, the I don't want to mess with the shape of it on the, the outside too much and instead of punching through it I'm just gonna drill through it but I'm gonna wait and drill through it until after I have the blade done also after just a little bit of pounding I've got my ring hole, the size that I want it, and then I also put that little bit of curve in it. So now, it's time to start working on the blade. This little bit of steel right there is going to be sufficient to start working that blade down and into the hawk bill. And then I'm also going to bend that blade over to where I get a crescent shape along the whole karambit like it should be. So now, the easy part, I'm going to do the blade. That'll be the blade. I'm going to be careful not to overheat the tip of it because it's thinner and it's going to heat up a lot faster. So I'm going to try to heat it in here, flatten that out as I go down, and I'll just start working it down that way. So remember on my railroad track build when I said I wanted to flatten this head because you have, if you have to curve something over, you have to hit it against that? That's exactly what I'm doing with the hot fill type blade. To get it to curve over, I'm hitting it against that surface and it's going to give it a gradual curve. See how it's giving it that curve that I need? Just keep repeating that and then flattening it. And that blade is almost where I need it right now. That's about the curve that I wanted it. I've got a nice crescent shape going through it. I'm going to draw it down a little bit more right here so I can get a good edge along the back side of it there. But I'm just about done with that blade. That came together real quick.
This knife build is coming to a close. I've drawn down the blade as much as I need, and I've got the crescent going around as far as I need. I'm just gonna give that blade a little bit more of a taper, make sure that it's straight, and then I'm gonna work it on the grinder. We'll be ready to start polishing this thing and start making it look real pretty. Nice, ornate knife. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold this little disc on here as a finger hole guide. I'm going to hold it exactly where I want it and then I'll trace around it and then I know how much of this I have to grind off to make it a perfect circle all the way around. Looks pretty round to me. So I took the paint pen and I drew around a guide so I could see what the perfect circle was. Now I'm going to grind all that off so that I have a perfect circle for the finger hole. All right, I'm through the meat of it. I've rounded off and uh, evened out all of the ring hole. And I've also straightened the whole blade and polished, well, not kind of polished, I've, I've just straightened it out. I've, I've made it level on both sides. I've gotten rid of uh, all the flat spots on either side of the blade. So now I'm gonna harden it and then I'll get ready to get the edge on it on the other side. So it, this is gonna be a nice and sharp karambit. And uh, you already know what that looks like, so I don't think I'll, I'll make you deal with another hardening video, but uh, that's where we're at right now. Now I'm all hardened on the blade. One of the last things that I'm going to do, I uh, almost forgot. I couldn't get the edge of my, grind, or my belt sander into this little uh, nook between the handle and the ring hole. So I'm going to hit that with the uh, angle grinder real quick, and uh, then I'm going to start working down the blade on either side, and I'll also probably... Uh, sit in my bed because it's getting kind of late and start polishing the handle and everything else with a fine grit sandpaper uh, getting ready to drill this out and edge the blade. What I'm doing now is hitting it with a wire wheel to try to polish it up. I'm going to make this one a little bit more ornate. So all these uh, black marks from forging it, I'm going to take out and I'm going to polish everything with, as far as I can with a wire wheel. And then once I'm done with the wire wheel, I'm going to work it down to a smaller grit sandpaper. Okay, I'm just about done with it. I've got it pretty well polished all over the place. Everything is... Uh, the handle's got a little bit of a wire wheel polish on it. I do still need to punch the hole out of the back, but uh, what I'm concerned with is getting the edge on here. I get all of my knives razor sharp, and this thing is just not going to fit into any of my jigs to give it that nice, clean, consistent edge. So I'm actually really worried about it. Uh, I will, I'm going to try to just do it by hand. I think I can probably do it by hand well enough to where I can get a pretty consistent edge. I've, I've put enough edges by hand on knives to where I think I could probably do it just, uh, just by eyeballing it, but we'll see. I'm, uh, 
I'm nervous about it because it's real easy to mess up your edge on the belt sander like this, but I'm going to give it a go and uh, we'll see how it ends up. Um, I'm hopeful, but skeptical. So what I'm doing is I've got my micrometer set to 1799, <coughs> half of my 36, and I'm going to get it right up to the edge and I'm going to draw my line on it and I'm going to intersect it in a couple of different places to make sure that I've got the exact center as I go through this. So I'll bring you along with me as I do this. Okay, and I, as I moved it around, I made four lines and they all converge in the same place, so I know that's gonna be the exact center, and I need to start drilling it out right in the exact center, and I'm gonna move bigger and bigger bits until I have just a ring on the outside. And there you go, finger hole. Now it's ready to get it sharpened on it. One of the last things I'm doing is taking out a little bit of excess steel on this side. The, uh, whenever I drilled it out, it was pretty close, but you can still tell that it's a little bit wider on this side than it is on this side, so I'm just gonna grind that down. It's maybe about a sixteenth of an inch. It's a small, small amount, but I can tell that it's there and it's going to bug me, so I'm just going to take it out. Okay, so in wrapping up, it uh, got late pretty quick, but I was excited to finish this. It was a really fun project. That's it. That's the final product. You can see that I uh, polished the blade and the fingering a little bit with uh, sandpaper and then I also got the edge on it I got it shaving sharp like I do with all of my knives it doesn't have any trouble making it through a piece of paper and if I had more hair on my hand left I would show you how well it shaves but it certainly does you can still see it coming off it's shaved sharp and sharp enough to make it through paper and uh, perfect size I actually couldn't have asked for a better build this one was a lot of fun and I would actually recommend this one to anybody else who's just starting out doing this because the railroad tie, it lends itself to making this karambit uh, quite well. Follow the steps that I showed you to do and you should have some great success in making your own karambit out of a railroad spike. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.